Now, I lost game one here. I'm facing against a Pendulum Mirror match against a very good player. If I don't side deck perfectly and watch myself and defeat the Sphere Mode or Dark Ruler he might have, and then game three, I got to clear a six negate board. So you guys see just how the odds are stacked against me, but knowing that my side deck is perfect, the odds are stacked against me, the odds are stacked against him. Even if I lose game one, I still am the favorite to win this match. Why? Because my side deck is perfect. So welcome to this video. I'm going to explain how to side deck perfectly. Smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. Get a beautiful trip game play on tripgaming.com. Sign up for the Patreon. Let's get straight into it. As you guys see, I want you to look at my hand. My first four cards, he has broken. I'm playing a Magician, Pen Magi Magician and Demian deck. And you know what? Every one of my decks are broken. This one, especially my hand's amazing. Look at the fifth card. It's Exchange. Exchange is the best side card for any Pendulum deck right now. They are not only going to Dark Ruler you. I know, people play Secret Village, right? Well, if this was a Secret Village, I lost this entire game. Why? Because he has a, a handy dandy Sphere Mode in his hand. So, he has a Sphere Mode. Do I know he has a Sphere Mode? I have no idea. I just know he's playing the best deck and I have to prepare accordingly. So, what do I do? I side in Exchange. Now, the beauty of Exchange is this. You guys see all my combos and my, my duels on stream. I end up with 5 cards in my deck at the end of my turn. I end up with 10 cards in my deck at the end of my turn. If you side 2 to 3 exchanges, there is zero chance whatsoever you are not drawing 1 or 2. Being able to know your opponent's hand, you don't even need 5 negates, you only need 2. Because you know what's in the gate and you know everything else in the hand is useless. Exchange is the best card in the side deck in 2020 for everyone, for every combo player. Because it is not just a Dark Ruler anymore we got to worry about, it, Sphere Mode has made its return into Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, am I going to activate exchange right off the bat? No. No, no, no. Because I respect my opponent to have a brain. My, I'm playing my friend Angel of Zera, Jose. He's on my stream all the time. Which, as should you guys be, go follow my Twitch if you have a brain. But, it, I know he has. He, he is not... I know that he, he is smarter than to just play hand traps against me. Because I would destroy hand traps. Hand traps do nothing against pendulums. And every good player plays around them. But... I know I'm expecting Dark Ruler, Sphere Mode, Mystic Mind, Evenly Match, shit like that. So you want to plan your whole combo around that. If he's playing Salamander, yeah, I'm using Exchange right off the bat. I'm using Exchange right off the bat. But every one of my cards are good. I don't have no dead card in my hand. I want to utilize all of them. And I know exactly what he's playing. Unfortunately for me, he's a Mirror Match. So Exchange becomes a lot worse than Mirror Matches. Because worst case scenario, is going to get, get my scales. So I'm going to keep drawing and plussing off the power of my deck. I know he's not playing hand traps. Let me get some, some free pluses for nothing. And at the end, maybe I can give him two magicians because I know he's playing mythical and demian. Hence, chronograph is useless for him and magicians are useless for him. They just become like high scales or scales and that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to keep drawing here. You know, you never know. Maybe I need an abductor. What if, he ha what if he's playing desires and I can get a desires? Stuff like that. So I'm going to leave exchange for the very end and uh, see what I can do from there and get all the plus I could possibly do. Another reason why exchange is so good is because of Sayusha. You get in with 10 cards in deck, Sayusha, you'll definitely draw the exchange. Now, the reason why uh, I'm saying side decking is so important, you get a free plus one. I'm trying to plus as much as I can. Uh, I know I have to exchange him. I keep drawing, and I need to draw low scale. Uh, you look at my hand right now, look at this. I have no low scale in my hand right now. I have no low scale in my hand. I get Sayusha if I want to, but I don't even think it was in my list at this time of video while making this the duel. I didn't want to like proxy. So, as you see, look at my hand. I have no low scale. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm playing a Pendulum Mirror match. I have a low scale in my hand right now. It's called Exchange. I can take any card from his hand to my hand. What if I did not have Desires and I was facing some deck that played Desires? I think it's Desires. What if I'm facing Salaman Great and use Exchange, take his Ash Blossom, and recognize the only play in his hand is a Lady Debug? Like, do you guys understand this logic now, how good Exchange is? I activate Magician Souls for one card. Not two, one. I get a second exchange. I'm like, this is very interesting now. I can not only take a low skill from his hand, I can take a sphere mode from his hand. I set my exchange and I activate an exchange. I look at his hand. He has an abductor, souls. I'm like, this is looking pretty scary. Desires. I'm like, this is looking pretty scary for me. Luckily for me, he has a sphere mode as well. So sphere mode, abductor. I'm like, yo, desires. I'm like, I'm going to negate the desires with my negates. I'm going to steal the abductor from my low skill. I'm going to activate it. I'm going to give him a card. I'm going to activate it, and then I'm going to activate exchange, my second exchange, to take his sphere mode. So just like that, now he can't sphere mode my board. I was debating even taking his desires, letting him sphere mode me, and I'll two negates, and he can't do anything. But desire is useless for me because I have only 10 cards in my deck, as I said. Now I go into Selene, I summon an a Selene, Appaloosa, Selene and Mighty Master with Appaloosa, and then I just pencil him in. I'm going to make a Mascarena here. I know everything in his hand. Uh, I'm going to Mascarena, Mighty Master. This is enough. Why is this enough? I know everything in his hand. 
He ends up drawing an institution for the six card, which as I told you guys multiple times, institution is the most overrated, overhyped pendulum card. It just absolutely sucks ass. If you draw institution with Cerberus, it is fantastic. If you don't draw institution with Cerberus, it sucks. It's that's that. It's either amazing 10 out of 10 FTK to draw Cerberus institution, or it's 0 to 10 useless, just a card to discard off Magician Soul's effect. So here, he activates Soul's effect for cost. I'm like, sure, bro, go ahead. He tributes summon for Jackal. Very smart play on his end. Why? Because if he activates Soul's effect, I'm going to gain any proper loser. He's going to lose a card for nothing. And he has no play here. I know he has two high scales. I know he has no low skill because I took it out of his hand. And all he has is a desire just getting his ass negated and an institution. Just before any cool, if he activates a spell counter, I don't want this shit to be able to negate anything. So off the bat, I'm going to discard his own, Unicorn discard his own sphere mode. What could he do now? Literally nothing. I know his hand. I know his hand. He shows me his institution, but he lost. So that was game two. Now, as I said, the odds are stacked against him, not me. I did lose game one. I did lose game one, but there's no way in hell am I losing this match. Why? Because my side deck is perfection. So I want you guys to see my hand. Do you guys see any side deck card? No, I don't, I don't see any side deck card. Do you? I don't draw any. It's very unfortunate. But I, drew, I, it, I put in just the perfect amount. Why? Because I know my deck. I know my deck. I don't let him do this whole turn. I sided every... If I draw one of my cards, it's auto win. Now, if you guys look at his hand, he ended up... Uh, uh, like I said, the institution was just used for souls. Institution is not a good card at all. Ends up with only two negates. The uh, Celine still has an effect, but he needs more spell counters. His deck does not play enough good spells, I think. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to go off the back and use pen call. I know my side deck. I know that I have six cards in my deck that if I draw one, it's an auto victory without question. So I'm going to activate a pen call as a, as a, as a, a, a bait. He's going to be forced to negate it with Mighty Master. 100% without doubt. And then I activate Desires. Uh, he's, and then Desires draw one of my auto wins. Now, unfortunately, I do have a dead card there in another Desires, but it doesn't matter to me. So I activate the Sphere Mode to get rid of uh, the other Negate. Uh, the, his board wasn't big anyways, but I still had to activate Card Time Timegazer. I'm going to be very smart here. Abductor out of Celestial to be able to add for next turn. And then I Pendulum Summon. Uh, make a I Pendulum Summon, make Crowley first for a follow-up. And then I link them all into... Link them all into a uh, Selene. I do not uh, summon the blue boy. I cannot normal summon that turn. I do not seek it to the knowledge. I just make a Selene. Get enough counters in the Selene to pop the whole field of Mighty Master. Uh, attack, attack. Uh, my Celestial is going to add me another Mighty Master at the end phase. Uh, to be able to summon two spell trap negates against a pendulum deck when he has three cards and I have no scales. So uh, I'm gonna, uh, I should have negate the knowledge uh, instead of the secrets. But I negate the secrets for some reason. And then on resolution, I summon the Mighty Master. And then look at my hand. I have a draw two for Blue Boy. I have another Desire. He's after I draw two. And Abductor Effect is going to resolve. And I'm going to negate his last spell counter. Or spell uh, scale. So you can't do anything. And why did I win this? I won this because my side deck was perfection. The way I built this side deck was perfect. The way I side deck was perfect. And my knowledge of the side deck was important. Because I recognized I did not draw. I did not recognize I did not draw a side deck card in game three. But I also recognize that my whole deck is draw cards. And I recognize the cards that must be negated, like Pen Call or cards like that, Mighty uh, Mastery. They have so many cards in this deck that must be negated. So if they must be negated, I'll activate them, let him bait to get negated, and then I draw into my auto wins. The same works for Adamantia, the same works for Denko against Eldlich. Summon Denko, clear their monsters. Denko and Jackal is an FTK against Eldlich because they can't activate any of their cards and Denko negate, uh, Jackal negate the uh, Eldlich effect to summon itself, and you auto win. The matchup against this whole meta is very easy for us. Pendulum is the same as, uh, as uh, Emancipator, it's just a better Emancipator. So that's how to side deck properly, and I'm going to show you guys now the deck list very quickly. This is the updated list, uh, and I'm going to explain exactly why I'm playing what card and how to side deck out. And I'm going to explain if you're playing Mythical and Demian, how you should side out as well. So as you guys see here, the side deck is Triple Dark Ruler, Triple Serum. We'll draw one of these six, you auto win against uh, an Emancipator, Rock deck, and the best deck, Pendulum. Best deck. So you have those two, and you get to kind of... Decide, okay, draw one of these six and you win. Look at your deck, all right? Draw a card, 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 etc., etc. That's 14 draw cards. Into the Void's a draw card, that's 15 draw cards. Foolish Burial Goods is a draw card, that's 16, 17. Metaphor's Fusion is a draw card, that's 18 draw cards. In this deck, Metaphor's Fusion gets discarded to the graveyard, but gets sent to the graveyard by Foolish Burial Goods. If you hard draw it, it gets sent to the grave by Pen Call, which you have three. Magician Souls, which you have five. Because of Abductor, Mastery and Servant get the Abductor, which gets Souls. That's 1, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You have 12 ways to discard the Fusion if you hard draw the Fusion. So you have 18 different draw cards in this deck. 18. 
So that means you have a 22 card deck. In a 22 card deck, you have six 22 card six cards. Because the cards you sign out would be cards, I would sign out after signing four chronographs. So three chronographs and one time gaze, that's four. You're left with two cards left. Uh, Secrets and Royal Magic Library is a normal summon. So I'll take out one of each of them because you prefer your normal summon to be sphere mode. Just save one the minimal engine for Crowley. So that's six cards. You take out those six, leaving 16 draw cards on 18. So you have 24 cards in the deck. 24 cards in the deck, and six of them are auto wins. So there's only 18 cards in the deck that are not auto wins or draw card. So out of a whole 42, you guys get that math there? Out of a whole 40 card deck, there's only 18 of those 40. More than half the deck is either a draw card or an auto win card. More than half the deck, you have 22 cards in the deck is a draw card or an auto win card. That's crazy. 22 cards in the deck is Dark Ruler, Sphere Mode, or a draw card to draw into a Sphere Mode or Dark Ruler. 22 motherfucking cards, bro, out of 40. That's insane. That's crazy. There's just no way you don't draw one. And if you draw multiple, that's fine. Because if you draw an extra Sphere Mode, if you draw a Sphere Mode and Dark Ruler, you save the Dark Ruler for Magician Souls, which you could search with Time Star, Abductor, Servant, Mastery, etc. So having Time Star as well just adds the full synergy to the deck that was missing. Uh, so that's the uh, new idea on combo. Now against uh, against combo decks and add a side deck. Against Eldritch, you put in Triple Denko, Dino Wrestler, and Red Reboot. Those are five cards. You would take out the four Chronograph cards and the one card uh, and the one Royal Magical Library because it's a normal summon. Uh, so that's what you do against uh, Eldritch. You only play the Red Reboot and Dino Wrestler for cards like Anti Spell, Imperial Order, uh, Floodgates. Uh, Next, exchange, Triple Exchange and Garuda. Uh, you play Triple Exchange and Garuda for what I, whatever you personally you like, like the like the least. I put in Garuda be, uh, because it gives you more guarantee you're playing around Dark Ruler because Celestial Magician searches Garuda on the end phase. Against Trap Decks, Heavy Trap Decks, you can also put in Garuda as well, putting six cards for Heavy Trap Decks. So that's the idea behind side decking. And this is the main deck that, uh, that is very good. You have this usually as well. If you don't hard draw one of the tr three exchanges, in a deck that plays 18 draw cards, which you will draw one or two, you have so usually to get into it. So this is that whole idea, not a side deck, extremely informative and all the information you guys need. Hope you guys like the video. If you like the video, smash the subscribe button, get on people, true game, play match, I play this deck because it's the best motherfucking deck in the world. Hope you like the video. We'll see you next video. Peace.